Hello, welcome to the Research and Disinformation series. These videos were made possible by a partnership between the library and the rhetoric department at the University of Iowa. My name is Chris Way, and all my work on the series has been in collaboration with Tim Arnold and Katie Hassman. The goal in this seventh and final episode is to wrap up our series with a summary of what we've learned. So in order to do that, we'd like to share with you a clip from an interview with a voter named Mary from Pennsylvania. In this clip, Mary discovers a seemingly very shocking story about the son of Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. It can be really easy to mindlessly scroll through Facebook, every once in a while pausing to read a headline or tap a link, maybe without even paying close attention to where it's from. That's what happened to Mary Henze when she came across a video that really surprised her. What was the source? Um, hold on one second, I can find it for you. I was reading about this and just absolutely in shock. Mary's 53 and lives outside of Pittsburgh. She was a Democrat for years, but switched parties and voted for President Trump in 2016. Mary finds the link on her friend's Facebook page. The House Intelligence Committee wrapped up its public impeachment hearings on Capitol Hill. OAN? The OAN video promotes a debunked conspiracy theory involving Nancy Pelosi's son and Ukraine. In fact, President Trump has even retweeted versions of the story. The less told story surrounding Paul Pelosi Jr. that's still unraveling on the side. I, I don't know what OAN is. And his business ties to Ukraine. Hold on. One American network. And these are the things that nobody wants us to know. Well, I mean, the one thing, the thing that strikes me about that is like, you consume a lot of news, I consume a lot of news too, but I've never heard of like the One American Network. Well, let's as, take a look like, at it. Mary asks her phone to Google it. So let's unpack what we just heard. Mary found a story from an unfamiliar website, OAN, the One American Network. The reporter mentions that she'd never heard of OAN before. And then Mary asked her phone to find information about this source. In other words, Mary decides to read the source laterally. Reputation and information on OAN, One American Network. One American Network, also referred to as One American News, is an Twitter account had a history. Oh, whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Can you keep reading what it says? Absolutely. Twitter account had a history of tweeting falsehoods and conspiracy theories. Hmm. After reading the source laterally, Mary discovers that OAN has a history of tweeting debunked conspiracy theories and other kinds of disinformation. Not great, right? But pay attention to what Mary says immediately after. Now, here's the thing, don't they all? Mary's reaction to having discovered that she's been lied to is to sort of shrug and rhetorically ask, don't they all? Don't they all? You might recall the book we discussed in an earlier episode in which Hannah Arendt explains how in the lead up to World War II, the German people didn't object to being deceived because they held every statement to be a lie. In short, the predominance of disinformation has made Mary become cynical. And she, like the Germans in the 1930s, believes that all news sources are lying to her. I don't think every news channel does that. No, I don't, but I think there's a lot that are biased. When confronted with the reality that not every news channel spreads conspiracies and lies, Mary conflates bias and disinformation. It's very common these days for people to conflate these two things. But as we explained in the first three episodes of this series, bias and disinformation are very different. Don't, do you think there's a difference between bias and a conspiracy theory? Oh, without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt, absolutely. Bottom line is, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican. They all lie. They all go behind the corner and try to get what they want. When the reporter says there's a difference between bias and disinformation, Mary concedes that she's right, but she then immediately doubles down on her cynicism. One of the big takeaways from this clip, and hopefully from this whole series that you've just watched, is that there's a meaningful difference between being skeptical and being cynical. You've probably heard that it's 
good to be skeptical about information from unfamiliar sources. And that's right, it's always good to be skeptical about information from sources you don't know and trust. And maybe sometimes it's even good to be skeptical about information from sources that you do trust. Are you sure this water sanitary? It looks questionable to me. It's fine, honey. Yeah. But what about bacteria? But skepticism isn't very useful to you unless it leads you to awareness about the trustworthiness of the source. If you get stuck in skepticism, that is to say if you remain skeptical and don't actively investigate your sources, you might end up like Mary and become cynical and think that everyone's lying to you all the time. Now before we give the impression that Mary is acting irrationally, we should clarify that the kind of cynicism she exhibits is understandable, given the state of the information landscape we all live in. In fact, this is why we're making these videos. Of course we acknowledge that deception in contemporary media is a real problem. So Mary isn't totally to blame here. The problem with her cynicism isn't that it's totally unfounded. It's that cynicism isn't helpful. Cynicism won't get her or you or me or any of us any closer to truth. And truth is exactly why this distinction matters. Honestly, skepticism can only help you if it leads you to a greater awareness about the credibility of your sources so you can find information that you can trust, so you can find the truth. You want answers. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! The what? The truth. The what? The truth. The what? The truth. The truth! The truth! The truth! The truth. It is what it is, it's the truth. And the truth shall set you free! Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Think of it this way, trust is the ultimate goal of skepticism. If your skepticism doesn't lead you to trustworthy information, then it's pointless and counterproductive. And that's where lateral reading comes in. Lateral reading is a tool that you can use to distinguish trustworthy sources from untrustworthy sources. The good news is that this becomes easier with time. When you read laterally, what you're doing is you're actually building a knowledge database in your head about the relative credibility of various sources. So if you laterally read nature.com, for example, and discover that it's a highly respected peer-reviewed journal, that means you don't have to laterally read that source again. Other habits that we may try to pick up, like exercising, might get more difficult over time, but lateral reading actually becomes easier over time. And the better we are at it, the more quickly we can do it. With just a little bit of effort, the very complicated information ecosystem in which we live can become more and more intelligible. Despite these promises of things getting easier with time, you might still feel overwhelmed by the amount of disinformation in social media today. If you're concerned about this and worried that it might lead the United States or perhaps even the world to some kind of authoritarian rule as it did in Germany in the 1930s, I would ask you to first consider that the internet is a very different kind of medium from the media that were available to people back then. In the 1930s, they had radio and film. There's no way to ask a radio or a movie or even a television for that matter, to verify the credibility of the information that's coming through it. But you can do that with the internet. We live in a very different world and have a very powerful tool available to us. But that tool isn't going to help us unless we make the effort to use it well. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this seven part series on research and disinformation. Tim and Katie and I have worked really hard on it and we hope it was helpful. Make sure to check out the other articles and resources in the links below this video. There's also a ton of material at the website uh, for the University of Iowa Library. And if you have further questions about doing research or evaluating sources or anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out to a librarian. We're always eager to help.